Well, that was really interesting because that's real world. So we've had an interesting morph of personalities here. Stefania has become Judah. Uh, so I'd like to introduce Mark Weiss, who is going to imitate Judah Levine. So I, uh, I should be mic'd up on the lavalier, and yes, apparently I am. I would not uh, presume to begin to imitate Judah. Uh, that would be a big challenge. Uh, Judah, Judah Levine is a, uh, he's a NIST fellow. He, he has done enormous numbers of huge things for the time and frequency division of NIST. He, he did a lot to create the time scale and kind of creates UTC every month from NIST. Uh, and he has built the largest NTP system probably in the world. Um, and uh, so he, here's his talk. Uh, he tried very hard to be here, but uh, if the government had opened before 6 p.m. yesterday, he would have flown out overnight. But what can you do? Uh, so here's the outline of the talk. Uh, we're going to talk about what is UTC and what is UTC from a lab, um, what is traceability, uh, what are the baseline requirements needed to perform, do traceability to UTC at a given accuracy, um, and then what's the trace base in terms of meeting your requirements. Uh, and then uh, uh, some remote system prototypes that uh, Judah has done that, that could work as a NIST service to supply time for anyone, any industry. And then a summary. Coordinated universal time with the acronym UTC, uh, it, there's a, it, it, it's neither the right acronym for English nor French. Uh, I guess they didn't want anybody to be right. UTC is not CUT, and it's not CTU. Anyway, it, it's neither. Uh, it, it is a it is a post-process time scale, which means there is no true real-time UTC. So if you're getting a signal that says this is UTC, it's a prediction of what time it's going to be a month from now when it's defined. Uh, so that's what that's about. Um, this is the way I talk about it. Judah would say different things, but it, it's, it's the reality that a physical time scale computed by a timing laboratory is written as UTC parentheses and the acronym for the lab. So there's UTC NIST, there's UTC USNO, in Germany, there's UTC PTB, et cetera. Um, and they all differ. They all differ by a little bit. So UTC from Galileo would differ from UTC. If it was a perfect realization of the, the, the lab that's generating UTC, UTC from GPS would be UTC USNO. UTC USNO differs from UTCs in Europe by maybe up to 10 nanoseconds. So there's the example. NPL is, is uh, the UK. OK, traceability. What is traceability? It's an unbroken chain of measurements from the end user application back to the national reference time scale. Unbroken chain of measurements. So each link in the measurement chain is characterized by a time delay and an uncertainty. OK, so that's the definition. How do, you, how do you manage traceability? Well, you need to log what you've done and what's going on, any events. You need to document it. Um, you need an external assessment. You, you can't always look at the tick you're getting and know that it's good enough. In fact, you can never know that it's good enough without an independent measure. Um, that, so, so 
if you get a time signal, there's no way to know by looking at that time signal if it's correct. And if you get time from GPS and you get another GPS or even another GNSS, they may be distorted exactly the same way and they may look identical and both be wrong. So it's, it, it, there, there's, it, it's very useful to have an independent method of getting time. Okay, so uh, you, you need, you know, these are the concerns. Uh, if you, the, the delay, the path delay, that's the big issue in getting time from somewhere to somewhere else, is how long does it take for that signal to get to you, and how do you calibrate that, how do you monitor it, how do you know that it is what you think it is? Um, and then within the software is another huge issue. How do, you, how do you know that the soft, if you've got software in the loop somewhere, how do you know how long the software is taking? That's a much harder thing to measure. Uh, and then, of course, if the application is in the cloud, I don't even know how to do that. Traceability in the cloud, maybe. I don't know how to do that. Um, Okay, so the baseline requirements. If you're doing your own GPS receiver and you want to know that you've got UTC and you want to be able to prove it, this is actually my panel talk, so I'm, I, I'm stealing from myself. Uh, Judah is stealing from Mark. Um, but the, the full traceability has to be documented and validated. Um, big issue is leap seconds. That's one thing that a lot of folks do wrong. Um, some receivers insert a second at the wrong time, either before or after the leap second was supposed to happen. Um, and then there's the Google version where they smear out the leap second over a day, which means you could be off by as much as half a second. And if your goal is to have 50 milliseconds even, you're, you're off by an order of magnitude. Um, and the goal is that the average accuracy at the endpoint exceeds your requirements, which means that the worst case has to, uh, if you go through all the traceability pieces, each of the worst case of traceability has to be significantly better than the requirement so that in the end, you never exceed the requirement. Okay, what's the trade space? Well, do you wanna be independent independent of navigation satellites. You could say, sure, I'd love to be independent of GPS. Okay, that's gonna cost you. Um, if you're, if you're, you've gotta monitor and validate your strategy. Uh, so if you're going through a network, you've gotta worry about the network require requirements. Um, do you want availability? Do you want redundancy? How much? How expensive, how much are you willing to pay for it? The holdover performance, if the signal's gone, you can hold it in your local oscillator. Again, how much are you willing to pay for that? And then um, some of traceability involves a time delay. For example, GPS, I, I think, I'm stealing from a later slide, but GPS is a prediction. Uh, the, 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 time, the signal that you get from GPS is a prediction of, of what the clock is gonna do throughout the day. They don't, it's not, it's not a real-time loop through the satellite. They don't measure it uh, and control it in real time. So um, if you want to know for sure that the satellite was performing correctly, you need to get back to someone who's been monitoring it, and now there's this extra delay. And then, of course, there's recurring and non-recurring costs. Okay, so uh, here's the examples of uh, some time services that, that Judah's working on. Um, so, uh, Judah has already set up multiple independent sites with redundant hardware at every site. Uh, I think there's four sites and 19 systems. 
um, there's a reference clock ensemble at every site, and it's almost completely independent of GPS. That is, the, the, uh, as you'll see in the data, he can hold uh, under, he can hold 50 nanoseconds for a long time. So really, he only needs to measure once a month or so, and he's got it forever. Um, and he monitors the system with internal checks every 10 seconds, and then does an external validation of traceability every 35 minutes. So he's constantly, so this is a model for how you would have to do it unless you want to buy his service. Um, and then more information, this is his NTP service that he's providing, and almost half a million requests every second is, is how many requests for time that he's delivering via NTP. And what you have to understand about that is that's going through the public internet. And the public internet has a very uncontrolled delay, and, it, and you can't guarantee, well, you can't guarantee any kind of timing through the public internet. Typically, you get 10, he says 10 to 20 milliseconds. It can be significantly worse than that, probably not much better than that on the public internet. On a private network, you can do significantly better than that. He also has authenticated NTP, and he has, you have to register for that, and he has 945 systems doing that. Uh, authenticated NTP is, is you know, they, they have a, a hash uh, byte that is sent and controlled, and uh, you can uh, know for sure that it came from NIST. Um, all, the whole service is commercial hardware and open software. The availability goal, his goal is five nines of availability. That is better than five minutes a year. Uh, that is no worse, am I saying this backwards? No, the failure, no, no more downtime than five minutes out of a year. And in 2017, there were no system outages. Okay, so here's some data. This is what his uh, time ensemble in Fort Collins, Colorado looks like as measured against UTC NIST. As you see, it, it varies no more than about, oh, plus or minus, it, well, it goes down as far as almost 20 nanoseconds and up about as far as five. So you could say plus or minus 20 nanoseconds. This is... Uh, uh, a cesium ensemble, which makes it expensive. This, there's no steering here. This is a free running. And uh, so really, all you, this is over, how many days is this? Uh, so it starts December 1 of 2016, 10, 20, it looks like about a, the month, a month. So yeah, he could hold uh, 50 nanoseconds with a measurement once a month. Uh, and that would be, so you only need GPS once a month for this to work. Um, he did the same thing with a free-running rubidium reference, where the rubidium had been, had been steered to uh, UTC first before it was free-running. Free and here he got plus or minus about half a microsecond. So again, if what you wanted was a microsecond, this would be significantly cheaper than the cost of a cesium reference. Um, so, in summary, documenting and validating full traceability is important. You, you don't really have not traceability until you can prove you've got traceability. Um, at, at the user facility is often inadequate. Um, there's a multiple parameter trade space for, for getting the best time, cost, availability, holdover, accuracy, all these things are in the trade space. Uh, and, and again, as I said, uh, NIST services are realized with commercial hardware, cesium and rubidium time references, and uh, remote systems can be located anywhere. And that's, that's the talk. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I will channel Judah Levine if anybody has a question. Yes, by the way, my name is Monty Johnson, OPNT. We do uh, white rabbit timing, one nanosecond targeted. But a question, do, do we know where those four sites are? You mentioned that he indicated four sites. Uh, um, I know that one of them is Nis Gaithersburg. One of them is Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, I'm not sure where the other two are. He used to have many more than four sites. I think they've been, there might be one at the Microsoft, at a Microsoft facility in, what? So, yeah, so Jill in Boulder would be one. So Microsoft in Seattle? Maybe. That's gone? So what's the, so one is the, the NIST Boulder site, one is the Boulder Jilla site, one is Fort Collins, and one is NIST Gaithersburg. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan.